I got Joe dropping in here from the Philly Philly podcast out in Philadelphia. He uh, got a couple of questions for you. How's it going, man? First of all, thank you for letting me on, man. Thank you, both of you guys. How are you guys doing today? Good, thanks. Good, good. good. Thanks for coming uh, so, on. So, so I'll make this quick. Uh, first of all, Jason, thank you for the years you gave to Philadelphia. Obviously, it was a lot of fun watching you play. Um, so I want to just start off real quick with it's obviously draft night, you know, so I want to see if you can maybe take us back to the night that you were drafted, just the emotions you went through and, you know, how that changed your life going forward. Uh, well, for those people that know me, I'm, I'm not an emotional guy. You know, my <laughs> dad face are, you know, pretty, pretty damn similar. Um, and honestly, I didn't, I didn't really have too many expectations. You know, I wasn't, uh, wasn't something I really had dreamed about as a kid to be a professional athlete. I mean, it, obviously I worked my butt off to get it, but, um, it wasn't like, oh yeah, we made it. You know, it was, um, I had, uh. I had other things too. I wanted to, wanted to accomplish, you know, in life. So it wasn't, it wasn't the end all be all for, for me. So I guess my emotion, my emotion, my emotion meter wasn't, uh, wasn't pegging. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. That's, that's something good to be able to be stay calm and everything. So, you know, obviously over at my channel, uh, Philly Philly podcast, we do cover the Eagles. Um, and you had a career year as far as sacks with the Eagles. Um, could you just kind of let me know about like, you know, maybe a memory or, or memories that you've had in Philly in your time playing there? Well, for those people that really know the Eagles game, I, if you ask me, like, what's it, what's it like to play for the Eagles? And I tell them, I said, it's like this. You win the game, they're going to give you their, your daughter's hand in marriage. If you lose the game, they're going to beat your ass with a lead pipe. <laughs> <laughs> There's no in between and they're going to know how they feel. But uh, that's what, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're true fans. They're, they're emotional. They, well, they want you to just win, baby. So uh, it's, it's a unique environment to play in. But I'm actually still there quite a bit. I do. I still have a lot of rental properties there, and we're always adding to them. So I'm in and out of Philly, Jersey area, you know, on the uh, now and then. That's awesome. And now I, you know, kind of piggybacking off what you were saying with the rental properties, I did read that you, you kind of started a um, rental uh, agency, I should say, with uh, a former teammate of yours. Could you just like let me know what kind of sprung that off? Like, how, how did you get into realty? Well, I've always had a passion for construction. My dad was uh, um, did, dabbled in it a little bit. Um, I grew up in the trades, so I learned how to do everything from electrical to concrete to framing to roofing, HVHC. And when I was playing football, I would, you know, I'd, I'd buy old crappy houses and in the off season, I would fix them up, you know, maybe some, but, you know, I did myself, but I hired a lot of it out, but I, you know, I knew what I was doing, you know, knew who to hire, how to hire. Um, and I just kind of kept doing that. And then when I got close to retiring, I, um, I wanted to have a storefront because I also had a construction company as well. So we build neighborhoods and apartments and, and I wanted to have something just kind of frame it up nice and neat, but I also wanted to do something because I, towards the end of my career, noticed that guys got, got done. And, and I still work with a lot of guys um, now that when they finish football, they don't know what to do next. You know, there's this, there's this boy, this missing thing, you know, and the, they're used to the routine. They're used to competing. They're used to going after something. And now they're, you know, they got, they're young. They have money. They have their family. They have a house, all that stuff. But, you know, I, I, had a, I was out at a wedding in Scottsdale talking with a guy who just retired. This is year one of retirement. And, he said, like, Babs, I'm, I'm losing my mind. I need something to do. You know, so what I did is I wanted to create something that these guys could take. Because remember, you're playing your whole time in the NFL. You're working towards a skill set. You know, you can't, you're not doing internships. You're not working on your craft. You know, you're not doing stuff at the bank or, you know, getting an MBA. You're working on, on, on your footwork. You're working on your skills. So when you get done, it's like, okay, now what do I do? I mean, you, know, you can't expect a guy that's 30 years old to go take internships in the cubicle. That's, it's, it's tough. So I created the franchise with Red Zone Realty, where it's turnkey, right? So these guys obviously have the skill set. People know them. They, they understand real estate. They understand, you know, how, how deals are done. And when we put it, we position them in a way where they can go on and because most guys want to be in real estate anyways or own real estate. So we kind of have some different hybrid models to help them, uh, you know, take that bridge to the next step. That's Ooh. awesome. So, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hey, go ahead, Joe. Oh, no, yeah, I'll, I'll make this one quick. I do have to get back to our draft show. I do, <laughs> yeah. like I said, appreciate so much that you guys gave me this time. But the last question I did want to ask, since it is draft night, you kind of said it with, with what you just said now, but what you know, uh, type of advice can you give players getting into the NFL now 
on and off the field? Because I know there's more to it than just going out there and playing every Sunday. Well, I, I think the biggest thing is is people don't really guys, you know, because I'll, I'll have the rookies over to my house. We'll we'll talk. We deal with a lot of them with the real estate, with property management. You know, but I tell the young guys, hey, listen, don't buy a house. Just here's the furnished here's the furnished place. All your bills, one check. Just focus on football, you know, because that window is so short, and you have so much unique opportunities during that window where take advantage of those, you know, because when you're playing football, doors open really easy. And what I did when I played is I wanted to learn about different stuff. I wanted to learn about how do I do a multifamily development? You know, when I played football, it was damn easy. I found the guy in the company that I thought was the best. I said, Hey, can you teach me how to do this? I'd love to learn. You know, I called him up today. He'd probably be like, who, what? I, I, no, no, get out of here. <laughs> you know? So while you play is one, I tell guys, listen, d- don't, don't worry about getting rich by play folks on football, save your money Two, take advantage of you, many unique opportunities as you can. And three, put your ego and pride to the side. Because when you don't play anymore, no one's going to give a shit who you are. you will be another guy in line. Trash, I'm 